Yeah, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome to ACO. This is a new series that I'm doing here dealing specifically with asynchronous task processing. I say new series, but it's actually a continuation from the C++ multi-threading series. If you remember that, we were working on a thread pool task queue, and we started looking at, you know, how to handle asynchronous operations in that context. And so this is a natural continuation from those ideas. Now, instead of handling asynchronous tasks, each with its own thread, we can try handling them with a single thread. Although you can also use multi-threading together with the techniques that I'm going to show you here. Um, anyways, the main thing about this series is we're going to be using boost.aco to do most of our examples and our explorations. And that's great for a number of reasons, because now instead of, you know, making fake async tasks that do nothing, we can make tasks that actually do something by, you know, for example, network communication. And I mean, boost.aco is one of the most popular libraries for doing this sort of thing. It is very powerful and flexible and fast, but it is also notoriously difficult to grok and very convoluted, especially if you try reading the code. So as people are saying here, I mean, I wish someone could explain this. And that's part of what I'm going to do here. It's going to give you a little intro to boost ACO. We're going to learn about asynchronous processing. And very specifically, uh, one of the main goals of this series is to introduce the idea of coroutines in C++. And how can we use C++ 20 coroutines to really juice up our code for asynchronous processing? So... Let's start at the starting point here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to borrow the project from a different series called Chill Framework. And we're not going to be using too much from that. It's, this is the starting point right here. It's a very basic main. But by borrowing that code, it gives us three things. It gives us a little library for easily adding CLI options to the command line, which will be very good for interacting with our test programs and it gives us a nice little logging utility. It is also pre-set up for VC package, which is what we're gonna be using to pull in our dependencies like boost ACO. So it's just very nice to start with this. If you're, you don't need to, you could do all the stuff that I'm doing here from just a completely empty solution if you wanted to. I'm just doing this for convenience. Um, and also if you're interested in how I built the CLI options or I built the logging utility, etc. You can check out the series on the chill framework and learn about all that. But again, it's not, it is completely optional. All right, so just a quick demonstration here. If we run our empty program here, no output. But if we look in the, here, we can see we've logged at the info level. Uh, if we specify help, it's gonna print out the CLI usage to the terminal here. And if we specify the log level as warning, then if we look at our output, yeah, we're seeing nothing in here because we're filtering out levels lower than warning. All right, that's our baseline. Let's get started. The plan is simple. We're not just going to jump into asynchronous or coroutines. First, we're going to write a simple synchronous program to show you the simplest way to do something. Then we're going to rewrite it with asynchronous with callbacks. And it is just, just a spoiler here, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be fugly. But then we're going to see how using coroutines brings it back and makes it sexy again, making it simple and powerful at the same time. That's the plan. So let's do our task. What is our task, by the way? All I want to do, and it's not a small thing, but uh, we want to connect to a website using HTTPS and just download a file from it, you know, like an HTML file or a text file. So we give it a URL, and then we want to be able to download that file. So we're going to have to communicate over the HTTP protocol using the secure sockets. And, you know, normally that would be quite complex, but Boost ACO, even though it's not really meant to be implementing, you know, protocols like HTTP, it doesn't help you out too much. It still gives us some nice stuff, especially in the SSL layer, to make life a lot easier. So it's not too bad. But we are going to have to do a bit of legwork ourselves and understand the protocol very little. We're not making like a perfect HTTP client implementation here. So our thing probably won't work on, you know, all websites, but it should work on enough to prove the point. So the first thing we got to do is we got to pull in ACO. So we got boost ACO. And another nice little helper that we're going to have is boost URL. 
this is just nice for parsing the different components of a URL. There's actually one more that we want, and that is open SSL. So if we want to be able to communicate using HTTPS, and you know, most many sites require that at this point, we're going to need open SSL functionality in there. And there you go. We have included it. It is in. If I build with this, it is going to be pulling in all those dependencies. And that might take a while, although I think I might already have them cached from a previous build. All right, now that took a while here, so apparently the caching wasn't so great, but the, the beauty of this is it only happens once, and then after that, you don't have to rebuild these every time. Now, the other problem is that it actually failed, uh, and that might be something I'm aware of with Boost. I recently upgraded my Visual Studio, and that, that broke something. So what I need to do in this case is I need to tell VC Package to use a more recent version of the dependencies that it's using. And the one way that you can do that is by updating this baseline. This points to a commit in the VC package repository. So we're going to update the baseline to this one, and we're going to try to build again and see if that fixes anything. All right, build done. That took significantly longer. If I try to build again, it should be fine now. If I try to change this, it should build relatively quickly, all things considered, because it doesn't have to rebuild. Yeah, OK, that was fast. That was nice. OK. So, now, what's the next step? Well, typically you would start by including ASIO, ASIO, and you could just include everything by including ASIO.HPP, I believe. That just gets you the whole shebang, and we could do things like that. Now, there are some downsides. First of all, it complains that you have to define the Windows version, so we can do that by including a, um, Windows header that I already have in the the chill framework that standardizes the Windows stuff. So if we look in core uh, win, I have chill win, which basically just sets the Windows version, sets some macros to control the Windows header, and then includes Windows.h. So we'll just include this before we include ASIO. Uh, now the other problem, as you probably saw there, there's a buttload of warnings. And you know, it is what it is. It'd be nicer if they just didn't have these things in there at all. But the main thing here is that we're not going to edit these files to change them. And we want to build with a clean build output. So we don't want to worry about these warnings. They're nothing that we, they're nothing for us to address. What we need to do is wrap our inclusion of ASIO with some, you know, disable statements for those warnings. Now, the third thing is boost ASIO. It doesn't, it doesn't build too slow, but we can make it build even faster by separating the compilation a little bit. And there's a guide on how to do that, but uh, let, me, let me break it down for you. We're going to do those three things in one fell swoop. So we're going to add azio.h and we're going to add azio.cpp. So first, we're going to do pragma1, so we're going to include boost.azio. Now, we need, to, we need to get rid of some of those warnings. So the first thing is to always include our Windows header before we include ASIO. Now, the second thing is we want to disable a bunch of those warnings. So, I mean, it's just a chore to go through them, get all the numbers, and then put them in here. I tried just disabling it by setting the warning level to zero and then setting it back. That didn't work for some reason. So maybe I was doing it wrong, but this works fine. So we'll disable those areas. We wrap that up. Now, the third thing is if you want to do separate compilation, so you don't want to compile all the code in everything that includes this header, what you can do is you can define boost ASIO separate compilation, and that will disable a bunch of stuff in here that has to be compiled in a separate file, which is ASIO.cpp. So let's go over here. So we define ASIO separate compilation in here. We do our warning disable, same as the other one. But here is a little different. What we have to do is we have to include boost ASIO impl source.hpp. So this is the actual stuff that goes, that is disabled when you include, when you set ASIO separate compilation. And so it has to be manually included in one translation unit that will be, you know, the definition for those that it can be linked to. So there you go. We improve our compile time a little bit. And then in here, instead of including boost ASIO, we include our own ASIO wrapper header, ASIO.h. And if we build this, so a few problems. First of all, we needed to include our windows in here as well. Second thing is I'm missing the warning in here. Pragma warning pop. Okay. 
Now it's going to work for sure. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Oh no, something went wrong. So this is something that happens to me sometimes when I use my own custom Windows header here. What I like to do is I like to do these defines that disable a bunch of stuff in the Windows header. It cleans up your namespaces, it can make the compilation a little faster. But sometimes you're doing Windows stuff that requires one of these subsystems that I've disabled. So in that case, you have to define full Wintard to say, okay, in this compilation unit, don't disable these things. So that's what we were missing. So we define full Wintard. Luckily we, oh wait a minute, not in here. We actually don't have to do it in the header. We only have to do it in the implementation file here. So that's nice that we don't, you know, fill everything with full Wintard. The Wintardation is confined to this one translation unit. Beautiful. And now we are building once again. No warnings, everything is clean and clear. All right, the stage is set. We can finally start communicating over TCP IP in the next video. Haha, <laughs> gotcha with the little cliffhanger there. Yeah, that's going to be it for this one. In the next video, we are going to connect to an HTTP server and hopefully download a file using uh, synchronous programming to begin with. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more ACO.